In this video, we're going to talk about how to use the autofill feature in Excel. So the first thing that you can do with this feature is you can make a list of numbers. For instance, let's say if we have the numbers 1 and 2 and we want to increase it in that order, simply left click and drag. Excel will automatically follow the pattern and fill in, out the rest of the numbers. Now, instead of increasing by one, let's say if we want to increase by two. Once we have a pattern going, left click and drag. Now we can also add numbers horizontally. For instance, let's say if we have the number three, and then we'll add four to that, seven, 11. We can left click, drag, and continue the pattern horizontally as well. Now we're not limited just to arithmetic sequences in which you're adding by a common difference to get the next number, but also geometric sequences. Let's say instead of adding by two, we want to multiply by two. Now, if you try to left click and drag it, it's not going to work. What you need to do in this case is once you select your, your values, right click it instead, like hold using the right click button. This is going to open up and instead of choosing the linear trend, choose growth trend and then it's going to follow the pattern. It's going to multiply by two to get the next number. Now the next type of pattern that we can use the autofill feature is if we're trying to write the months of the year. So let's say if we write the first month, January, and we want to continue the trend, left click and drag. We'll stop at December. We can also write an abbreviated month and just get the first three letters. Now we can also use autofill for the days of the week. So if we write the first day, Monday, and then just drag it, we can drag it all the way to Sunday. Or we can write an abbreviated day. Let's redo that. And then drag it to Sunday. Now we can also use the autofill feature on dates. So it's currently August. Let's start with August 1st. We can increase the dates by one using the autofill feature. We can go up to August 16 if we want to. Now, not just the days and the dates, but we can also increase the months in the dates. So we can do it that way as well. We can also increase the year as well. So whatever pattern we establish, Excel is going to try to extend the pattern. So here we can go up to the year 2040. So we can increase the days, the months, and the years within the dates that we have. Now the next thing that we can do is we can also use time as well. Let's say if we want to create a schedule or more specifically, an hourly schedule. We can type in 8 a.m., 9 a.m., and then extend the pattern. Let's go up to midnight. Now we can also break this up into 30 minute intervals. So we'll start with 8 a.m., 8.30 a.m., 9 a.m. and so forth. So I'm going to go up to 9 p.m. 
So that's another thing we can do. Let's say if you have a timesheet for your work or for your job, this feature might be helpful. Now let's use the autofill feature for formulas. So first let's delete this. In the first column, we're going to have the month. Let's say we're in a business of selling calculators. Now we're going to look at our data for each month. So I'm going to start with the first month, January, and we're going to extend that all the way to December. In column B, we're going to put the number of calculators sold. So I'll just type units sold. And let's just put in some numbers. Let's say, and in column C, we're going to put the price. Let's say each calculator was selling it at a price of, let's say these are graphing calculators. We'll sell it at a price of $75. Now, because it's not going to change, I'm just going to extend it all the way to December. Let's say in January we sold 400 units and then 320 units in February, 280 in March, 250 in April, 240 in May. It's summertime, so sales are going to drop. When school picks back up, sales are going to skyrocket. July is probably going to be higher. Now in column D, we're going to write our formula. So this is going to give us the sales. It's going to be the unit sold times the price. So we're going to take the information in cell B2 and multiply it by the information in cell C2. So I'm going to write equal B2, shift 8 for multiplication, and then C2. So that's going to give me the sales for January. Now, I'm going to follow the same process. So this is going to equal B3 times C3. So now what we need to do is extend the pattern. So we can look at our formula here, B2 times C2, B3 times C3, B4 times C4, B5 times C5, B6 times C6, and you want to make sure that this pattern is retained. Now, we're going to calculate the sales tax that we need to collect. So we're going to choose, let's say the sales tax is 8%. So that's 0 0.08. And now let's extend this. This number is going to be constant. And then I'm going to multiply the information in cell D2, shift 8, or times the information in cell E2. So this is going to be D3 times E3. And now let's extend the pattern. So let's check it. So we have D2 times E2. D3 times E3, D4 times E4, D5 times E5, and so forth. And if we want to, we can get the total. So this is going to equal the sum, and then we'll highlight this column to get the total cells for the year. And then this is the sales tax collected. So to get the total sales tax equals sum, and then we'll highlight this column. Now let's also get the sum for this column as well. So let's get the total number of units sold. So that's 4,820. Now if we want to, we can adjust the appearance of the title of each column. So I'm going to bold it, and then I'm going to fill in the color 
kind of change the background of those cells. Just to make it look a little more interesting. So that's basically it for this video. Now you know how to calculate, or rather, you know how to use the autofill feature of Excel to make it work easier, to save on typing. Instead of typing all the 12 months, you can type in the first month, use the autofill feature to fill in the rest, and that's going to save you time.